know this neighborhood. I got beat up in that alley. You just don't know when to give up. I could do this all day. Do you have something against running away? If you start running, they'll never let you stop. Hey, True Believers, England teen here. Continuing the road to Black Panther, which actually, the way I'm going, I might want to say it's the road to Avengers because it's taken a little longer than what I thought to get through these things. Anyway, just reviewing and ranking basically all of the Marvel movies in order of release. And of course, this is Captain America First Avenger. I remember when this first came out, I was more excited for it than any of the other Marvel movies. I like Captain America as a character better than practically any other Marvel character outside of She-Hulk. So I was really looking forward to it. And now, years later, after watching it many, many times, I go to it again. And I've got to say, it is more of a film than any other Marvel movie up to this point. There are men laying down their lives. I got no right to do any less than them. I can offer you a chance. Our goal is to create a new breed of super soldiers. When he brought a 90-pound asthmatic onto my army base, I let it slide. Admittedly, Chris Evans wasn't my first decision for Captain America, I have to say. I saw a few more people thought, yeah, okay, they're built like brick shit houses, blah, 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 yada, yada, the whole nine yards. And now, of course, can't see anybody else playing it. One of the best things is in the beginning when his face is superimposed onto another person's body to make him look smaller. He's got a look in his eyes that actually he never loses even when he is Captain America. And it shows that this is a guy who's grown up being bullied and even says, you know, I just hate bullies. But the fact that even when he becomes the confident hero, he still remembers what it's like to be bullied. I really thought that just added layers to the character. And it proves that Chris Evans was the right man for the job. I am looking for qualities beyond the physical. You win wars with guts. Grenade! Everybody down! Is this a test? He's still skinny. And that's not even to mention the supporting cast. Supporting cast is incredible. I don't care who you are. Everything out of Tommy Lee Jones' mouth in this movie is just too damn cool. You gotta just give it up. I mean, I, I personally loved the, the Haley Atwell, uh, Agent Carter. And holy crap, there's a reason she was given her own TV show. The Criminally Underseen Agent Carter TV show. And thank you for S.H.I.E.L.D., by the way, Marvel. But the TV show that I really wanted to see was the Howling Commandos. Some of my favorite scenes involved them, hands down. The the attacks on the Hydra bases, just the scenes in the bars, and you could not convince me that they got they could get a better person to play Dum Dum Dugan than Neil McDonough. He just he nailed it just by the look alone. Yeah, I know. I, I understand. You can't get Captain America can't get Captain America for the T V show. However, they could do Nick Fury. And if they wanted to really push the boundaries they could do the story of an international uh, interracial excuse me relationship in 1940s that way you could have the white nick fury you know the whole thing in the comics now where they have black nick fury as the uh, son of white nick fury it would work and i think it would make for a really cool tv show whatever happens stay who you are not just a soldier but a good man is it too late to go to the bathroom <laughs> actually did it yeah i have to address the fact that he really got buff i mean he certainly put his work in to play captain america i could understand as he gets older why he just would want to drop out but then again you'd also understand why you want to keep going my daughters of course they just think he's hot as hell uh, i just bringing this part up it was in the trailer and the fact that you know okay uh this is what i it gets mentioned to me i've got I got daughters, so they talk about him. I would like to point out, though, this scene, he must have just come off of a workout just to show up like this, and they never explain why the Vita Rays make him huge but then oil up his pecs. They they never say, mention that in the movie, and I want to know what was the importance of pec oiling in the experiment, and did it actually help him turn into the super soldier that they needed? 
Who the hell are you? The first of many. Don't let him fool you. It's Thorin. It's a dwarf king. Hydra is the Nazi deep science division, led by Johann Schmidt. He thinks he's a god, and he's willing to blow up half the world to prove it. What? What do you want me to say? It's Hugo Weaving, you know? I mean, there's not much to criticize here. He even emotes and he carries it off in makeup. That's a big deal. I mean, I, I love the scenes he's not wearing the red skull. But when he is wearing the red skull, it's just that much more menacing. He can pull it off. While I can understand he doesn't like to be in the makeup, I wish it was different because... He makes for a great villain. I would have to put him probably second place. Loki, Red Skull, then Obadiah Stane, then The Abomination, and then after that, uh, Whiplash. I don't count the uh, Sam Rockwell character because the movie didn't count him. But this is an incredible for performance from an incredible actor in a lot of makeup that looks very, very good. I asked for an army and all I got was you. Congratulations. You just got promoted. Mr. Stark? I had some ideas about the uniform. You're gonna get so many girls. Speaking of the uniform, we have the classic. I like that. I like the fact that they included it. And yes, they also made sure that it looked comical. The mask doesn't fit him very well in this. He's carrying the triangle shield. I thought that was nice. He even It's obviously made of metal as well because it gets punched by the red skull and the den is made. This, by the way, is the best scene in the film to me. I love the action, but it's this USO show scene that just carries it for me. The later outfit, well, that's basically the Ultimates outfit, and it works as well. It, it, the loud bright suit would not work in the military setting that they had he's still captain america he's still obviously captain america but it does have that more militaristic look and it is this point where you realize that the marvel movies are going to embrace being comic book movies based on comic book superheroes captain we are much alike i don't know if i can do this you won't be alone to you so special nothing i'm just a kid from brooklyn to sum everything up man i love this movie i don't just like this movie i love this movie this is like i said it's a film this is a real character study with a whole bunch of acting around it, or action around it and the acting is i just misspoke here is incredible and i really appreciate everybody's performance captain america is a man who was bullied and became somebody who could do something about it. Tom Lee Jones is just the coolest damn thing ever. Uh, Haley Atwell nails it as Agent Carter. And let, you know, Hugo Weaving is the Red Skull. Perfect. This is an amazing movie. It's one of the better origin films of the Marvel Universe. I stand by that. And I await the comments that try to tear me apart and convince me otherwise. Good luck doing that. If you try it. Come with great arguments. Hey! You're late. Nobody's perfect. Iron Man 2 remains in last place at number 5. Incredible Hulk moves down to number 4. Thor takes the number 3 spot. And Iron Man's reign at the top comes to an end as it slides down to number two. And debuting at number one is Captain America, the first Avenger. But that's my opinion. What is yours? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Were you indifferent? Do you think I'm crazy for loving it as much as I did? Let me know in the comments below. But like I said, bring it. Don't be, oh, you stupid. Because <laughs> you know what? Every time I hear some dumbass just insulting me, that's the voice you're speaking in. Seriously. You are a dumbass. You're fucking stupid. Yep, that's it. Yeah, you're a dumbass. 
Unless you come with a good argument. Man, convince me. That's what I like. I like debate. Bring it on. Also, if you like these videos, you want to see more, click like, click share, subscribe. You know the drill. Also, if you think you're subscribed, you found this video, check it out again because YouTube has been screwing me over on these things. Uh, I've had people say they're no longer subscribed. They're not getting notifications. So please, by all means, make sure you're subscribed and make sure you have that bell rung so you don't miss anything because cool things happen around these parts. And here's the Patreon spiel. Hey, True Believers, Zenglantine here. Now, you've heard me say on many a video, this is my only job, so please go on to, over to Patreon, drop a dollar in the till. Help us keep the lights on. Help us keep uh, making videos for you. So I decided, here's something nice to do. Why not, in order to say thank you, have a graphic novel giveaway? And so I figured, why not? And Superman in the 70s, is this month's giveaway to anybody who donates a dollar or more. The drawing will be on March 6th. We do have two tiers. When available, we're going to be giving away hardcovers as well. And this month, we're doing both. One for the $1 or more, and one for the $5 or more. This month's graphic novel is Batman Illustrated by Neil Adams, Volume 2. Just to give you a little look at what it's all about, I've got my copy right in front of me. And a lot of people thought that it was Frank Miller who returned Batman to greatness. But if you ask me, it was Neil Adams. Neil Adams and Denny O'Neill, man. They wrote some great stories. They made some great stories. And Neil Adams' atmospheric art just looks great. It looks amazing. And this book, it, it is just such a great compilation. And even as you get all of these stories right here, this is the... And then you get introductions and forewords, so you get the, the history behind it as well as the stories. So yes, please, go on over to Patreon, drop a dollar in the till, get in the running to win Superman in the 70s, or drop five dollars or more in the till, and get in the running to win Batman Illustrated by Neil Adams, Volume 2. I'd like to thank everybody who's already done that, and to everyone, thank you very, very much for watching. Sleeping? You here with a mission, sir? I am. Trying to get me back in the world? Trying to save it. 